he is giving out of his own poverty. Even though he only have few or nothing, as long as he could provide to many, this is how great this lover of God. Hello Chingus in Faith, welcome back to another episode of Holiness at PH. Let me share to you the story of holiness of Archbishop Teofilo Kamomot. So after completing the intermediate level, he assisted his father at the farm for a year. He developed a fondness for working in the cornfield and seriously considered taking up a secondary education in an agricultural school far from home however his mother interfered because she cannot imagine how her timid and sickly son can survive in a strange new place obediently long as he was fondly called stayed and pondered his future in the silence of his heart his half-brother, who is a priest, convinced Lolong to continue studying at a minor seminary. After his ordination, the youthful and energetic priest regularly visited his parishioners, whether they live around the town proper or in the remotest barrios on the mountain top. He was not an eloquent preacher, but he worked very hard in crafting his homilies, writing them down with his distinct road heavy strokes, a habit he continued throughout his ministry. He was also a persevering confessor, who waited patiently for penitents who wished to be reconciled with God sitting in the confessional box making himself available as early as 4 a.m before the mass and then after his generosity was legendary whoever comes to us for his help never left empty-handed because he was known to be quick to dig his hand into his pocket and give away whatever he could draw from it. Even his episcopal cross and episcopal ring was not spared from his acts of kindness. It is very rare for a bishop's ring to disappear from his finger and reappear at a pawn shop. For so many people asking for his help, Soon enough, it became a common scenario in his office to receive a call from the local pawn shop owner who would dutifully report, The ring of Monsignor Kamomot is here again. He was known for his selflessness and total detachment to material possessions, one time when his good-hearted friends or colleague offered to buy him a new car, the good bishop always replied, If I drive around in a fancy automobile, what right will I have to beg for help for the poor? He doesn't only serve the poor, he himself lives in poverty. He founded the Daughters of St. Teresa to serve the Church through zeal for Catholic education, preferential love for the poor, and option for pastoral services. One of the biggest challenges he encountered in his foundation were dissatisfaction and division that was repeated several times more until 
ultimately seven independent institutes branch out from the daughters of St. Teresa. While his heart was sad and broken by the scattering of his beloved ship, the founder maintained his faith and optimism that the division happened for a greater good. Amidst the separation, Monsignor Kamomot remained calm. He got sick, and when he recovered, he visited them and asked how they were getting along. All the while, he was most prayerful, full of faith and hope. The only free time he kept for himself were those times spent kneeling in front of the Blessed Sacrament, in intimate and silent communion with the Lord. He was also known for his spiritual gifts of healing, reading of hearts, levitation and bilocation, and his blessing and absolution as a confessor, were much sought by his brother priests even at their deathbeds. Monsignor Kamomot was well aware of his own mortality and somehow knew intuitively how the final chapter of his life was coming to a close. Two days before his demise, he intimated to his assistant, Father Fulton Varga, how he wanted to die. A quick but painful death, quick so that no one would have to suffer, painful so that with the pain, the sins we committed here on earth would be immediately paid for. So on September 27, 1988, he died in a car accident. The, the driver escaped unharmed. But Archbishop Kamomot was killed instantly. He was 74 by then. The entire province mourned his passing. At his wake, people from all walks of life line up patiently and reverently to pay their last respects. From the highest officials of the province, and the archdiocese to the farmers and laborers he served and cared for throughout his life his funeral was one of the biggest anyone in cebu has ever seen thousands of these consolate mourners lined the street and flocked to the parish church for the 10 a.m concelebrated mass led by Cardinal Vidal, along with over a dozen bishops, monsignors, and priests of the diocese. Let us always remember that we may have no gift and talent as versatile as those of St. Vincent de Paul, nor can we passively cover a mission filled and the extension that he envisioned in his days. But one thing that likens us to him, we are all children of God. As children of God, we shoulder the responsibility to carry the love of God in our hearts, to love him with all our minds, with all our strength, to love him more than anything the world can offer us. Let us be possessed of a fervent heart that can be easily softened, a heart that can easily feel a love for the Blessed Sacrament before the cross and before the Blessed Mother, and charitable to the less privileged and poor. Amen. Amen.